There are two very powerful schools of thought for how pitchers ought to attack the strike zone to be successful. One, attack the strike zone directly. Or two, paint corners and live in the rivers. How can both be correct when they are in direct contradiction to one another? Which option ought pitchers pay heed? To get to the bottom of this question, since I work with all of you at lessons instead of games, I went back to all of my notes from previous pitching con conventions where I was able to listen to philosophies on pitch calling from the elite coaches in our game. Lonnie Almeida from Florida State, Larissa Anderson from Missouri, Beth Torina from LSU, Missy Lombardi from Oregon, Karen Weekly from Tennessee, and Stephanie Van Brackler from Alabama, just to name a few. What I found was that each of these great coaches and pitch callers had a slightly different take on whether painting the corners and using the rivers or chucking it down Broad Street was a better method. However, I have deduced why there is such a difference in philosophy that exists and why both can be right depending on the pitcher who's in the circle. It all comes down to the type of pitcher you are. Should you attack the zone or pitch near it? Every pitcher needs a wow skill they can dominate. This wow skill is usually your pitching hallmark. And if you don't have one of these skills as your hallmark, you ought to figure out which one makes most sense for you and really work hard to master that skill. These wow skills include, one, having elite velocity, 65 miles an hour or higher. Two, having the ability to change velocities with movement on at least two different pitches and at least three different speeds. Three, possessing true break movement on two plus pitches. Four, having the ability to locate the ball on a dime, literally a dime, not a four by four foot square area. If you possess either number one, elite velocity, or number four, tremendous accuracy, you are going to be the type of pitcher who paints the corners and uses the river to entice your offensive opponents to swing. Believable balls, that are butted up to the strike zone, but not in it, and can be repeated on command, will get an umpire to ex expand his or her zone as they'll see your intentionality of throwing to that zone. Batters will be forced to swing, and their eyes will tell them that the pitch is close enough to swing. And if it isn't in the zone, but just close to it, they will likely hit the ball off the end of the bat or closer to the handle, forcing a weak ground ball or fly ball to induce outs. Why should these two wow skills stick to the corners and rivers instead of throwing it down Broadway? Because pitches that are straight but fast in the hitting zone can be easily barreled up. Pitching machines and great offensive coaches make this too easy. So we need to focus these hitters. We need to force these hitters to swing in places that are harder to get the barrel of the bat to contact at the right time. On the contrary, if you possess number two, the ability to change speeds with multiple pitches, or number three, exceptional movement pitches on two plus pitches. Throwing these pitches in the strike zone is the best method to attack hitters. For the pitchers who change, who change speeds, you are disrupting timing for the hitter so that she can rarely be on time. You induce early or late swings, which also causes weak hits or swings and misses. However, if these pitches aren't in the zone, it won't work. Hitters are taught to avoid the changeup in most instances until two strikes, so we need to get called strikes with changeups and off-speed pitches so that it forces the opponent to have to swing. And when they do, they will struggle to get the barrel to the ball because their timing will be consistently challenged. Last, number three, the movement pitcher should also attack the zone directly. The brain of the hitter will tell them where to swing and the pitch will break to another location several inches away causing mishits and swings and misses. This type of pitcher rarely needs to throw a ball because their strikes are unpredictable within the zone itself, and the round bat with minimal surface area has to square up a pitch to create enough force to be effective. Therefore, this type of pitcher can attack the zone early and often for a successful result. Hopefully this helps us all clear up the great debate of whether to throw in the zone or around it to be an effective pitcher. Just like in most things in life, one size never fits all.